Hi, this is Frank Taylor of Nature at Your Door. I am here in Ticino, Switzerland, on the Lucamagna Pass, and I'm on the side of the road where the bus just dropped me off, getting ready to take a hike across the mountains here. This is the very top of the Lucamagna Pass. There's an ospizio here, or a restaurant, and a hotel. And today, I'm going to be crossing from here in the Blenio Valley across to the Levantine Valley and on the way I'm going to stop at a very very mysterious and unusual lake called Lake Cadano. And Lake Cadano is of fascination today to scientists and it's been very very studied and there's an active research program there right now. And Cadano was known for hundreds and hundreds of years by the locals as being something very, very unusual. It had more fish in it. It was more productive. They caught more Arctic char and native trout in this lake than any other. So they always knew there was something going on with that. So I'll share this hike with you and the mysteries of this lake. So stay tuned for the story on Lake Cadano and uh, its amazing, amazing biology. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. It's going to be an exciting day here on the Paso de Duomo. I left the bus stop uh, behind me and I'm heading up seemingly into the sky on this pass. This is actually a military road that's dug out. It's not the most uh, scenic, but it's a very nice route to go across. I've crossed these mountains on two other passes from the Lucamagna. One is called Paso de Sole, the other Paso de Colombo, and they are the, some of the most beautiful trails in all of Switzerland for sure. These animals have been up in these high alpine pastures for the summer, and now they've got to come down to lower elevation for the winter. The shepherds stay all summer with them up in uh, little refugios, uh, little cabins up in the mountains with the animals and the dogs. As you can see, these are no ordinary cows. These are yaks. The Swiss have a fondness for yak meat as a gourmet meat and pay top price for them. Well, I just reached the top of the pass here. It is so beautiful, so fantastic. It's near the intersection of two other fantastic trails or passes called the Paso di Sole and the Paso di Colom. And this is just so beautiful. I got my shades on because the last time I did this and I was squinting in the sun, I got some heat from my viewers. They said, change your angle or put some shades on. So I got my shades on so I don't go snow blind up here. And it is just so beautiful. This hike is so amazing. I was so surprised to see the yaks on the way up again. I'm gonna see if I can flip this around 
and give you the big screen here. Uh, the truth is I can take all the videos and photos I want and the camera just doesn't capture the 3D, the vastness, the openness, the pristine air, the incredibly deep blue skies with the contrasting with the snow. Just a fantastic hike. So I'm on my way to the Cademo, uh, Cadango Hut and Cadango Lake where I'm going to tell you about its mysteries. So well, here I am at Lake Cadagnano, and we're at about 6,302 feet. This lake is perched on a high shelf, almost in a bowl of these mountains here. And so I'm doing a 360 here, so you can see where we are located. It's October 3rd. We've had a little bit of snow coming in, so we got a lot of peaks covered. Uh, we're in the uh, Central Alps of Switzerland, otherwise known as the Lepontine Alps. And we're on a rock. Um, geologically, we're part of the San Gotardo Massif here at 6,302 feet. What is the mystery of this beautiful lake? Well, this lake was known to be a fantastic place to fish because of an abundance of Arctic char. And hundreds of years ago, there was uh, native trout. They've been replaced now by rainbow trout and brown trout, which are not native, but they're thriving in this environment. Usually these lakes and the alpine lakes, we say are oligotrophic and oligotrophic means that there's very little nutrients in it. So with few nutrients, few phosphates and nitrates, these lakes have very little algae in the water column for photosynthesis, a little zooplankton, and very little food for little fish, and hence the bigger fish. But this lake is unique, and it has had a tremendous fishery here. And uh, the locals have known this for hundreds of years, but have never known why. So you can see I'm shooting this episode live, handheld. I've been on a 10 mile hike today. I don't have a tripod. So most lakes are hollow mictic, meaning that they turn over at least once a year, usually twice a year, and there's mixing of the lake from top to bottom. In a halomictic lake, usually a thermocline develops. There's a separation of the water at the top of the lake from the bottom of the lake by a thermocline. So the warm water on the surface of the lake is less dense, it rises to the top, and cold water is more dense, it rises to the bottom, and they form two layers. But as uh, fall or spring progresses, the temperature at the top becomes closer at the temperature at the bottom. And when the, both the top layer and the bottom layer uh, reach the same temperature, then the whole lake turns over and a little gust of wind can cause that lake to turn over entirely. So it brings up nutrients that were uh, laying on the bottom up to the surface, surface waters to the bottom, and the lake mixes. Now, this lake is unusual because it's meromictic. And meromictic means it does not mix. It has a permanent top layer and a permanent bottom layer, and the two never mix together. Now, how is this? And this is what the mystery of this lake is about. The water at the top of the lake is very much like water in other high alpine lakes in this region. It's very clear, very low in nutrients, 
but it's abundant in fish. The bottom of the lake, however, is where it's really, really kind of crazy. And the bottom of the lake is fed by cold underground springs that are percolating through limestone and dolomite. And these are very, very soluble rocks. And these soluble rocks dissolve, and leaving tons of ions like of magnesium, phosphates, calcium, sodium, uh, nitrates, phosphates, all sorts of ions in the water here that make that water very dense, so it's very heavy. So that heavy, dense water that's full of all these dissolved salts stays on the bottom. Now, the unusual thing between this now is you've got this cold water at the top that comes from, it's very clear, it comes from springs and runoff, and the water here comes off these granitic mountains, and granite is very insoluble. So the water picks up almost no minerals at all as the snow melts and the water and the streams run down into this. So that top clear layer stays well oxygenated and is perfect for fish. The layers between those two, it's about a meter or two. So we've got about 10 meters of cold, clear, crystal clear water. Then we've got a two meter uh, chemocline. And then below that, the next 10 to 20 meters down to the bottom is totally anaerobic, no oxygen at all. And that middle layer is called a chemocline because there's all this chemistry going on in there. And it's full of pink and purple sulfur bacteria that are unusual because they don't do oxygen and yet they're photosynthetic, but they don't have uh, chlorophyll. They use another kind of pigment to do it. So we have this rich, rich layer with massive, massive growth of this purple sulfur bacteria doing crazy growth, crazy bioproduction. And that feeds the microorganisms and the zooplankton of the surface and making this lake so much richer at the surface for fish than anyone could have imagined. So here we have this very mysterious, very rare Meromictic Lake that never mixes with the separation of the clear, cold, oxygenated water that the trout and arctic char love here. And then on the bottom, a deadly anaerobic, no oxygen, dead zone of the lake. And in between about a meter or two layer of these purple sulfur bacteria that use sunlight, but then they don't, they don't use oxygen and they don't produce oxygen and they don't uh, uh, release carbon dioxide. So very unusual biology here. Scientists are really excited about studying here because this gives us a great look into the biogeochemical um, uh, pathways that actually run the earth. These bacteria are so important to biogeochemical maintenance and cycling of nutrients. Usually in lakes you have this, but it's only a, in a like a millimeter or a centimeter of two on the surface of the bottom where all of this uh, uh, chemical cycling occurs. Here you've got a two foot or a two meter wide area that you can sample and you can sample it year round and study it year round. So here we have a center for alpine studies that's uh, doing tremendous research projects on this lake. Such an amazing lake, such spectacular scenery very lucky to be here experience this absolutely perfect october 3rd swiss alpine day on this 10 mile hike through the alps from one well-known alpine valley to the next so up there is uh lake Cadano, and lower down as i'm going down the mountain this is Lake Riton, which is actually a lake that was dammed up to produce hydroelectricity. Like many of the dams during the day, it releases 
and the generators at the bottom of the mountain generate electricity at peak demand. And then at night, when electrical demand goes down, they pump the water back up to this lake. This is a holomictic lake. It mixes uh, a couple times a year, and it also has arctic char and brown trout and rainbow trout in it. So here you can see I'm taking the final walk down to this side of the valley. So I've successfully made it from back up in there down to this point where I can see the Sementina Valley uh, that has the Gotthard Road and the Gotthard Pass that goes up to my right, the original uh, north-south route that was so important through the last, oh, say 2,000 years, um, including uh, Roman rule and Roman roads. Uh, I'll be back to a funicular that will take me down. It's one of the steepest funiculars in the world, um, and certainly one of the steepest in Switzerland. Another fantastic view looking south on the Gotthard Road. Mountains on both sides, just fantastic. Well, this has been Frank Taylor with Nature Udor here in Switzerland. I hope you learned some things about this amazing lake, Lake Cadango, and learned the difference between Halo Mixic lakes and Marrow Mixic lakes. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe and give me a like. I love hearing from my viewers. Leave me a comment. I may have 10 million views, but I'd listen and read every comment that's there. And I love hearing your stories and your experiences. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door here on one of the most beautiful days in Switzerland I have ever seen. And remember, I cover all things nature. Frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.